mendengar tagline data adalah segalanya jangan sampai data ini jatuh ke pihak-pihak yang salah. Namun jika sebenarnya data ini bisa kita olah dengan baik, jangan kaget sebenarnya manfaatnya akan besar sekali untuk pengembangan bisnis. Nah kita akan membahas salah satunya ini solusinya adalah Internet of Things atau IoT. Untuk mengetahui apa sih sebenarnya Internet of Things dan juga bagaimana IoT ini akan membuat Hidup kita ini akan jauh lebih mudah. Kami sudah bergabung saat ini dengan Mose Panjaitan, founder dan juga CEO dari Miora. Halo Mose. Halo. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So, apa sih yang sebenarnya harus kita ketahui tentang IoT ini? Kita sering dengar tapi kita juga tidak terlalu familiar dalam artian apa pentingnya IoT dan seberapa revolusioner sih perubahan yang bisa dibawa oleh teknologi ini. Right. Jadi, um, just to uh, go back a little bit on the history of internet, ya. Jadi, in the f- the first wave of internet tuh pas i- internet masuk ke personal computers kita. That changed the way the world worked. Okay, businesses are done differently, and people are able to make things a lot more efficient using the personal computers with connected to the internet. Terus, the second wave of internet is the smartphone era, yang mana 2008 gitu ya, when uh, Steve Jobs came out with the iPhone, and that changed the world for the better again, right? Uh, making things a lot more efficient, a lot more uh, optimal, and a lot of businesses grew out of that, and people's livelihood sekarang kita tahu kita nggak bisa hidup tanpa HP, kurang lebih ya. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> and so with Internet of Things, it's um, people call it the third wave of Internet, where sekarang banyak hal yang terkoneksi ke internet. So not just uh, your computers, not just your Um, phones, but everything like you have smartwatches now. Itu that's the the more known one, or you have things that uh, appear in smart homes. So, Internet of Things is actually just a, a tool that can make you live your life a lot more efficient, like you mentioned before, and in many different industries in many different ways. Itu uh, long story short, more or less like that. Okay, so we would like to know the understanding and also the usage of Internet of Things in Indonesia right now. Right, so um, there, there are many usage for Internet of Things and for the different industries as well. But for Miota especially, we're focusing on Miota City or more commonly known as Smart City. But in this Miota City, we're trying to integrate um, an end-to-end managed service solution where kita uh, megang semuanya dari from the hardware and the, the, the design of the hardware, the firmware, and then the software as well as the connectivity the big data infrastructure and the analytics. So we try to consolidate all of that into one manageable service where people would get efficiency and as well as uh, uh, transparency. Jadi kalau misalnya the ones that we're doing now is Miyota City is under um, where we monitor electricity, water, and gas. You can monitor those a lot more efficiently without having human contact. Apalagi di zaman seperti sekarang, contactless atau Well, lebih dikit human contact itu lebih bagus lagi kan, because uh, we're not supposed to be contact uh, to be in contact with um, too many people right now. So by transforming transforming a lot of the manual work uh, into digital, you can have things again a lot more efficient and transparent. Jadi you don't get any loss in in efficiency or maybe kerugian or kebocoran, and as well as you understand where the data. Is coming from and what you can do with that data is very abundant, depending on the industry again and depending on what you want to do with it. So this is cost saving, definitely. It's definitely cost saving is a big part of it, yeah. Especially the one that we're doing, gitu. Jadi, because a lot of human can uh, they, mereka jadinya uh, a lot of human errors when there are a lot of humans, and you get there are when it's not transparent. Apalagi when you're running a big industry, kalau misal tadi uh, listrik or uh, water or gas, can the It's very segregated the the point of point of contact gitu. So when you don't have that into uh, an integrated system, it's very hard to keep track of what's going on and how much is the outputs actually efficient. And if there are anything that's going on behind that you don't know, that's that's maybe making it um, very uh, rugi for for the company, I guess. So it's uh, more or less like that. So if we compare this aspect, uh, cost saving, and then the investment that they will make if they decide to adopt Internet of Things, right. like, can you give the comparison, like in the long run, why people should consider Internet of Things? 
Sure. Well, um, I think the business model is quite important as well. And for us, the, the business model that we're doing with, internet and with IoT is that we do build, operate, transfer, and we do manage service. So what that means is um, the, our clients don't have to put a capital expense at, at the front because we take care of that. And then they will see the benefit from the moment it goes live. So basically, um, it's a no-brainer for, for our clients where they don't have to pay for anything. They get the benefits straight away. And then we just, uh, because it's a managed service model, we just uh, have a profit sharing or um, cost efficiency sharing uh, model. Okay, so, I get so, it. so it'll, it'll benefit the, the clients from the fir very first day until whenever the thing needs to get replaced, probably, the, the entire uh, okay. platform. Okay, if you see in Indonesia, uh, yeah. to what level is the adoption of Internet of Things, both in public or private sectors? Okay, so I think the adoption is very small still. Mungkin not a lot of people are able to utilize it well because um, I would say less than 10%. Why? I think the, the awareness or the, the, the usage of it is not very apparent yet. What I'm trying to say is the business model is very important because just having the, the Internet of Things be applied to a lot of the different industries does not make it, does not necessarily bring value to, to the company itself. Jadi, what the important thing is actually finding uh, the, the right problems or finding problems that needs to be fixed and using Internet of Things as one of the ways, one of the means to solve that problem. I think the, the appealing thing about Internet of Things, especially for us and the, for Miota, um, is that there are a lot of problems that can be fixed with IoT. It's not that we found IoT and uh, what should we do with it, but it's, we, we noticed that there are so many efficiencies and non-transparency in, in the field right now, especially the, in, in industries as well as um, um, the, in corporations, that with coinciding with the advancement in technologies, like the sensors are getting better, the, the, the parameters are getting wider as well, we are able to utilize that into a feasible way where using our end-to-end -end managed service uh, IoT platform would bring great value to you, okay. to anyone who uses it. Yeah. So a lot of benefits actually, but other than awareness, what is the biggest challenge in the adoption of IoT in Indonesia, I in think, your opinion? Right. I think um, other than awareness is, yes, um, the, the regulation plays a part as well because with Internet of Things, um, we are dealing with a lot of data, right? And because we're dealing with a lot of data, the and security... I think our regulation is lagging. Right, right. And I, I can't... Um, I don't want to blame just our regulation. I think in general, it takes a while for, for I guess, any countries to, to get used to the idea of data being moved around so, so nonchalantly. And because of that fact, um, the, the regulation is quite a hindrance for us because in order for Internet of Things to be adopted widely, we need to have a lot of these connectivity in, on a big scale. Did you, um, to, to get a little bit technical, if I may. Sure. If I, if I may, um, in, in the, in fo with smartphones, we're using GSM, right? With GSM, kan kita bisa dapat bandwidth yang gede banget. Yeah. Terus bisa, we can watch videos, we can have, do, do phone calls wherever we are. With Internet of Things, the, the amount of data that we're, uh, that, that are traveling is actually very small, so we need uh, a different technology. And right now, the, the most advanced technology is called uh, LoRa, or Long Range Radio Frequency, where if you implement those, you can get very uh, high, far distances and connect to a lot of different devices with very low cost. Low, and the cost is a very important thing again. And if you're able to do that, you're able to build the connectivity infrastructure with Internet of Things, then all the different IoT applications baru bisa dibangun gitu. Wow, so if we if we start like Indonesia as a country uh, build infrastructure to enable more adoption of the IoT, it will be great, I think, because our president once like before the right. pandemic mentioned about right. uh, what is it, uh, automatic vehicle, right? Right, right. That's uh, that's another part of I mean that's driverless right driverless cars, vehicles right, autonomous yeah, yeah, vehicles autonomous vehicle. it's uh, that's a uh, very exciting too I think that's also a sub section or like a part partly um, can but be categorized IoT is as very IoT as well. wide it's right? very wide it's very wide again and the thing is um, yeah so 
the implementation, and, and I'm not saying the regulation is all bad, because we have had new um, advancements and improvements in the regulation where they finally, akhirnya kita di, dibolehin pake a certain radio frequency to utilize the LoRa technology. So one, on a, one of our biggest um, uh, launching uh, next month is we're going to try to implement this LoRa technology on a, such a big scale that it's bigger than than it's been done before in the in the world essentially. So with this uh, LoRa again LoRa technology with the radio frequency, um, we're attempting to connect to 50,000 devices. Where um, I think the biggest right now is in Brazil, which which is only around 15,000 devices. So it's three to four, yeah, three so to four times. So it's much greater. It's a much greater implementation of this new technology, and I'm, I'm happy that we're able to do this. Uh, Miota is able to do this, and we're getting the support. Now we're getting the support from the, from the regulations as well, and from the parties uh, inside and outside of Indonesia, because um, without that, well, I don't think that's, that, it's, that it's feasible. Okay.